Hey guys, what's up? This is Amy with Apex Acres and today we are going to talk about what we are going to plant in our summer garden. Now in the last video we talked about what we were going to plant in our spring garden. This time we're going to plant or talk about what we're going to plant in our summer garden. Okay, first we're going to talk about what seeds we're going to grow um, or what um, vegetables we're going to grow in our garden this coming year. Um, I seem to have an issue with thinking that I have a garden that's like 10 acres and I have a garden that is probably roughly um, maybe a thousand square feet, maybe, maybe, probably not even that. So um, you're going to see that I'm going to show you a lot of different um, varieties of plants that we're going to grow for our veggies. Um, but a lot of it, I'm going to be growing like one or two plants instead of like a whole row of something or a whole bed of something, just because I love to try out new things and see what works and what doesn't work for us. Um, I'm kind of uh, a color addict, so I love having all kinds of different things in our garden that are beautiful colors and, and just give like a really beautiful dynamic to the garden. So first off, we're gonna start uh, talking about cucumbers. Um, cucumbers, I like to grow on trellises because that gives me more space to be able to have the cucumbers. When cucumbers grow out on the ground, they sprawl out really, really far and it takes up a lot of, of uh, soil space. So if you grow them vertically up a trellis, you're really only taking the edge of a garden bed that you're growing in instead of a full, you know, great big, spread out area um, that you would if you let the plants grow along the ground. So there's a couple types that we're growing this year. Um, I grew these last year. They are just called cucumbers. They're a pickling cucumber. Um, I grew these last year and they grew really, really well, really prolific. Um, we made a bunch of pickles with them um, and they had a really good flavor. So we're going to grow those again. Um, we're also going to do a Market More 76, and these are going to be good for not only eating, but um, I also um, work at the Farmer's Market on Saturday mornings, so I like to set up a booth, and I want to have more vegetables available this year. Um, last year, when we enlarged our garden, we found out that what we ended up growing was really pretty much just what we needed for our family, um, and... I didn't really have a whole lot of extra, so my tables looked pretty bare and there was not a lot of uh, selling to be had. So this year we're gonna be planting more things so that we can have um, better success at the farmer's market as well. So uh, like I said, market more 76. Um, I also have a muncher cucumber that I'm gonna grow. Now these typically don't have as good of a production as the other two, um, but they are a burpless cucumber. So I know that'll have a selling point when I take them to the farmer's market. And also um, I grow cucumbers for uh, family members as well. And my mom especially appreciates the uh, burpless cucumbers. Now the last uh, cucumber we're gonna grow is called cucamelon or Mexican sour gherkin. And you're probably gonna say, what are cucamelons? They're actually a cute little, um, they look like a baby mouse watermelon, like a teeny, teeny, tiny watermelon about this size or about bite sized. Um, but they're a cucumber. And this year I wanna grow enough that I can try to pickle them and see how they turn out. And maybe it'd be a great um, treat for the kids uh, to open up a jar of pickled cucamelons and see how they taste. So we're going to be growing um, a lot more of those this year as well. This year they're actually going to get two full trellises. So hopefully we'll have a really nice um, production of cucamelons this year. The next thing we're going to grow is ground cherries, Aunt Molly's ground cherries. Now we tried these for the first time last year and um, wasn't really sure, you know, even what they tasted like or if we were going to like them but they were amazing. The Amish ladies um, in our community grow these a lot and use them a lot of times for like pie fillings and things like that. We found that we really just loved eating them fresh, um, right out of the husk. It was a good like snack thing to snack on while we were in the garden. 
Um, but also I mixed some of these in with a peach cobbler and it was such a good little bit of tart mixed in with the sweetness of the peaches. So we're definitely going to grow a lot more of these this year. However, when um, we have enough to preserve, what I'm going to do is actually freeze them so that I can either put them in smoothies or put them in um, any kind of like uh, pie or baked good. I'm not actually going to can these. So excited about uh, growing these. The next thing that we're going to talk about are pumpkins. Now, my kids are super excited all the time about growing pumpkins. And we are actually going to grow the pumpkins in a different area than the garden just so that they have the room to sprawl like they need to. Because pumpkins get awfully heavy and they don't do as well on trellises. You can tie the pumpkin up, but I don't want to take the risk of not producing pumpkins for my kids for the fall. So um, we have a couple of different types of pumpkins that we're going to grow. Um, we went to a seed swap and my son found um, Dill's Atlantic Giant Pumpkins. So we're going to try these this year. I don't know how this is going to go, but we're going to give it the old college try and see if we can get a giant pumpkin to grow this year. We also got another thing called Peanut Pumpkins uh, seeds from the seed swap as well. And they are more of a decorative type pumpkin. Um, I will put a picture up. So yeah, so that's the pumpkin seed that we got. We'll see how those go as well. And maybe we can sell those at the farmer's market when it comes time in the fall. Um, and then I'm also going to do some sugar pie pumpkins, um, just so that we have pumpkin puree for different things. Um, so yeah, so those are the pumpkins that we're going to grow. Now squashes. We do uh, summer squash and we also do winter squash. For our winter squash this year, um, we're going to do the Watham butternut squash. I grew these last year at Petrellis and I ended up getting, I want to say like 18 squashes or more off of just two seeds. So it was insane. And these actually take the place of sweet potatoes in our pantry here. And then we're also going to try a striped Cushaw squash. I've heard these are really good for like pumpkin, pumpkin pies as well. And actually, I think in the industry of making pumpkin pies, it's more common to use a Cushaw squash than to use a pumpkin. So we're going to try these out as well. I am going to put them near a trellis. However, they can become very large, so we'll see how they do. We might let the plant grow half on a trellis, half off a trellis, and see what works out best. Okay, so next we're going to be growing zucchini. I have a lot of different varieties of zucchini because I really love to use zucchini in almost everything. I'm a mom who loves to hide zucchini and stuff because my kids won't eat zucchini. So I put it in our spaghetti sauce. I put it in um, a double chocolate chip bread and they absolutely love it. I grow, I make it as muffins and as bread. So, and then I also like to eat zucchini quite a bit and it's starting to grow on my husband. He's starting to be better about eating it as well. So we're going to grow a couple of different kinds this year. Um, and again, so that we have some to uh, sell at the farmer's market as well. So we're going to do a gray zucchini, a yellow zucchini, which is very similar to like a um, summer squash, like a crookneck summer squash. Um, but we're going to do the golden zucchini. Ron Denis. Um, it's like a little eight ball zucchini. And then we're going to do Italian striped and Black Beauty zucchini because this is like my tried and true zucchini. This uh, brand produces lots of zucchini. Um, but like I said, I love a lot of color and texture. So we're going to be planting um, multiple kinds, but possibly only a bush of one or two of each kind, and then that's it. All right, after zucchinis, 
we are going to be planting peppers. And peppers I love to do definitely later in the summer because that's when they thrive is in that hotter weather. Um, this year we're going to try pepperoncini because we love the jarred pepperoncini at the store. So why not try to make our own? Golden Cow Wonder, which is a sweet pepper. A new one this year we're going to try is called the... Pepper Zulu. It is a black bell pepper. I'm kind of excited to try this and just see what it looks like once it's growing. Um, you know, always like to try new things. And then um, Jimmy Nardello is a sweet pepper. And this one's really good for cooking and roasting. Um, I love these sliced up in an omelet or cooked in a stir fry. The flavor when they're red is almost like... Um, almost like cherry flavored. They taste really, really good. We just really love these peppers and they're a staple in our garden um, from now on. And then the Autumn Bell Sweet Pepper, which is a red bell pepper as well. And in the winter time, I really like to dice up a lot of peppers and put them in the freezer so that in the winter, um, we have them to add into all kinds of recipes. I probably this past winter, or this past fall, excuse me, probably put three gallon bags of peppers in the freezer and we're down to less than half of our last gallon. So it's definitely something that we use a lot of. Um, and I plan on putting more up um, this fall as well so that we have more that lasts longer until the next fresh pepper harvest. Now, as far as hot peppers go, we are not a hot spicy family. I don't like things that are hot and that will hurt me. So I'm one who pretty much prefers to not grow hot spicy things. But I have a, my son Alex does like a little bit of spice with some of his meals. So we are going to grow a few peppers for that. I'm also going to be growing some for the farmer's market because even though I don't like spicy things, other people do. So we are definitely going to grow a jalapeno. Uh, long cayenne, uh, what does it say? Spanish cayenne long red and slim, um, which makes a uh, good cayenne pepper. So we can dry these out, crush them up, and then use them as seasoning to kind of perk up some of the dishes that we cook. And then I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do habaneros and serranos. I grew them last year, but I felt like I didn't get a lot of production all at the same time to make it worth like taking it to the farmer's market. And I think they were too hot for my kids. So I'm on the fence about these. If I find a place where I can stick a plant or two, I probably will. I will probably start some for the farmer's market just for people to take. Um, when they're wanting to buy pepper plants, I'll have them as an option. Um, but I'm not going to do very many just because, like I said, we don't really eat them. They're too spicy for us. The last hot pepper I'm going to grow is called a Sugar Rush Peach. Now, I don't have it yet. It's on order uh, through Baker Creek, and hopefully it will be here soon. But I'm super, super excited about this one because it's supposed to be a sweet pepper that has a little bit of heat at the end, which kind of has my name on it. If it really does taste like that, um, it'll be perfect for me and I think the rest of the, the family as well. Um, it'll be something that'll be just a little bit warm, but not anything that's like gonna take your breath away and have you begging for water. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited about growing it. Hopefully they'll be here real soon. All right, next is beans. All the different kinds of beans I'm growing. And actually when I pulled them out, I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? This is, this is pretty crazy. But you know, I just, I like to try different things. And we're gonna be adding some new garden beds, which I'll show you here in just a little bit so that you can see how the layout's gonna be. Um, so why not fill them, right? Sure, why not fill the beds? So. First, we're gonna start off with like types of bush beans. So 
most people call them green beans, but they come in all different colors, which is of course what I like to grow and I like to make sure that I have as many colors as possible. So um, we're gonna do the Blue Lake Bush Bean, which is just a standard green bean. It has a really good flavor and grows really well for me. Um, the next one is actually my new favorite bean and I will grow these for years to come. They are called a red swan bean. And this is very similar to a green bean. It looks exactly and almost tastes exactly like it when you cook it. Um, the thing is, the flowers are beautiful. The pods are actually red. And it is the sweetest raw green bean you'll ever eat. So if you're somebody who likes to snack on raw green beans, this is the bean for you. This red swan bush bean. It is super, super sweet and amazing. I love it. Love it. Um, we'll ask, also do uh, trip, uh, top crop, excuse me, yellow bean um, or a wax bean is what a lot of people call them. And then we also do um, royal burgundy purple beans. Now these colored beans that I'm showing you, they actually lose their color once they're cooked. Um, but it looks really cool when you're picking them and putting them in a bowl and getting ready to start cooking your meal. They just turn green like the other green beans once they're cooked, but um, it's still fun to have the different colors. And if you have kids gardening with you, they will be really excited about picking the different colors as well. Um, and then we have a couple pole bean varieties that I like to grow. We are going to do the Oriental Yard Long Bean. I really like these beans because they really do get to be you know, between a foot and a yard long, depending on how good your climate is and how good your soil is. Um, but these are a lot of fun and they're um, really cool to watch hanging from a trellis because they are a pole bean. Um, it's it's really neat to see the, the long streaks of being hanging down from the trellises that you grow them on. The other trellis bean, uh, green bean style type is a it up here. Um, it is a Thai soldier bean. Now this one is about a foot long, but it's a purple and green uh, potted bean. If you buy from Baker Creek, which is where I got these, um, they will say that they are a bushing variety. However, they're really not. They are much more of a pole style bean. So you will need a trellis or a pole to grow them up. They do bush a little bit at the bottom, but they send out shoots um, and runners that the beans will start to grow off of. So make sure that you have some way of pulling or trellising these beans. All right. Now I've got a couple of dry beans that I'm gonna grow. I know we had talked about some spring dry beans that we're gonna grow, but now we also have some summer dry beans. And you know, it kind of sounds a little silly, like why are you doing them in the spring and in the summer? Well, different types of beans like different types of weather. So the ones that we're gonna grow in the spring are gonna do great until the weather gets pretty warm. At the point that the weather is starting to get warm, I can start the next batch of beans growing so that I have beans growing continually. When the others have stopped producing, I can pull those out and then start another type of climbing plant in its place. So the uh, pull bean, the other uh, pull bean I'm gonna grow for in the summer is a Christmas lima bean, just because it looks cool. That's the only reason. I like lima beans, but nobody else does. But what a cool looking bean that is. Look at that. How neat. So yeah, I'm gonna grow it. Then I have two bush style types that I'm gonna grow as well. One is the Henderson Lima and then a Calypso bean. And these look really cool. They look like little mini orca wells. It's also called an orca bean. Um, but I thought these would be really cool like in making chili or if we did ham and beans or something in the winter time, um, we're gonna grow these to dry them and then have dried beans to um, eat later on in the year. I have a couple of things that I've never grown before and it's new for me to try. Um, one of them is a melon and it's called the Kajari melon. And I heard about this melon through Jess at, over at Roots and Refuge. 
and it is absolutely their favorite melon. So I'm really, really excited to try this. It trellises really well and it has nice small fruit. So they're about a single serving or enough for two people, depending on how much melon you eat. Um, and it's supposed to be like a real sweet, let's see, what does it say? Uh, very sweet with pale flesh. I've heard it's similar to like a honeydew, but way better. So I'm really excited about trying this this year and hopefully I can do it justice and grow good uh, Kajara melons. Then the other thing I want to try is okra. And now I've never even tasted okra other than fried okra. But I've heard it has a lot of health benefits. The mucilage in the okra is supposed to be really good for gut health. So this is something that I'm wanting to try this year. I don't know. It could be a complete fail. I don't know if it grows well in Indiana, to be honest. But, you know, it's always worth a shot. And I'm sure it's going to need nice hot weather. So hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully it'll do well for us this year. Now. You're probably saying, well, what about tomatoes? She didn't say anything about tomatoes. Well, I'm saving tomatoes for last, saving the best for last. My favorite thing to grow is tomatoes. I absolutely love tomatoes. I love all the colors and varieties and flavors from acidic to floral flavors that you can find in tomatoes. And a lot of people think, well, tomatoes are red. I just eat red tomatoes. And once in a while they think of the yellow pear tomato, but there are so many more good flavors out there and amazingly beautiful varieties that you can grow. Um, I urge you guys to just get on like Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds or, well, it's rareseeds.com or go to migardener.com and just look at all the different varieties of tomatoes that they have available. It's absolutely beautiful. If you're anybody like me that just loves looking at stunning, beautiful pictures, you absolutely need to check it out, especially if you think, you know, there's really just red tomatoes out there because you are going to be quickly amazed by how beautiful tomatoes can really be. So I have room this year in my garden for 45 tomato plants, not counting what I'm going to put in grow towers in the garden as well. I'm just talking like bed space. So I'm going to show you some of the tomatoes that I'm going to grow. Um, I may end up adding more in as I go because I tend to do that when I find new varieties that I haven't grown in the past. Um, but just to give you a rundown as far as what I plan on putting in the garden this year. Uh, for large tomatoes, we'll start with that. We're going to start with just large variety tomatoes and then we'll go through cherry tomatoes. So we are going to do um, vintage wine. And this one produced well for us last year. And it's a beautiful um, red, golden, orange striped tomato. Black from Tula. Now, I would tell you this tomato is not black. It's actually almost more like a pink tomato with some dark shoulders, if you will. Um, but this had the best flavor for us last year. This was our favorite as far as the flavor of the tomato. It had a really, really good flavor. It was fantastic on sandwiches. I'm going to try one more pineapple tomato plant this year and see how it does. My pineapple tomato plant last year was okay. It really didn't produce much, but I kind of neglected it too. So I want to give it, um, give it its due and and see if we can get it to do better for us this year. A new one for us will be Pink Ox Heart. Um, I've heard that this one is great for not only just eating um, fresh, but it's really good for canning because it's meaty. And we're definitely going to be canning more tomatoes this year. So um, that's what we're going to add. We're going to grow a mana orange. Kellogg's Breakfast, which I've grown in the past, and it's an amazing tomato. It tastes amazing. Old German, which is going to be new for me as well. Again, it's a bicolored tomato. 
We're gonna try persimmon, which is actually kind of like a terracotta color. It's like an orangish tomato. So that'll be an interesting one. Aunt Ruby's German Green. Now this is a green tomato that is actually going to be used for like sandwiches and things like that. This is not used for fried green tomatoes. Actually you use um, just any green tomato, tomato that's not ripe when you're making fried green tomatoes. Another new one this year that I can't believe I've never grown is Paul Robeson, which is supposed to be like an iconic tomato. So I wanna try it out and see how it tastes. Mortgage Lifter, Ace 55. Another one of Brad Gates's tomatoes is the Berkeley tie-dye green. We grew this last year and it was really, really delicious as well. So we're definitely growing this one again. It's also a showstopper in the garden. It's just absolutely beautiful. By the time it's ripe, it is green with stripes of red and orange and even gold hints to it. So absolutely beautiful tomato. And it's on more of the sweet side compared to like a red tomato that'll have more acidity to it. We are also going to be growing a tomato I don't have pictures of. I'll put a picture up um, here in just a sec. So that's the Tumbling Tom tomato in a pot. This year I have some grow towers that I'm gonna be using and we are hoping to fill one whole grow tower full of Tumbling Tom tomatoes. They are amazing when you dry them and put them on pizzas or just even eat them as like a dry, uh, basically like a dry fruit snack. So definitely gonna be growing a bunch of those this year um, and saving the seed as well. We're gonna keep them in an area away from the rest of the tomatoes so that we can save seed um, because we actually have to order these seeds um, from out of the country. And I wanna make sure that I, can just keep producing my own instead of having to buy from outside the US. We're also going to be growing a couple brandy wines, um, brandy wine red and brandy wine yellow, um, and then Amish paste. These are gonna be for the farmer's market. Now I'll take some other of the unique varieties to the farmer's market. However, I'm not somebody who it sounds silly, but I'm not somebody who likes to grow just a red tomato or just a yellow tomato that is just kind of average. I need the weird stuff. I need the colorful stuff. So we're gonna sell most of those through the farmer's market. Of course, anything left over will still go in the garden, but those are mainly for farmer's market. Now the cherry tomatoes. We are going to do blueberry cherries. And these actually are probably the most prolific cherry tomato that you will ever grow. These things are the first ones to set fruit and the last ones to die off. They are a fantastic tomato. And they also have the purple shoulders, which contains the anthocyanin in it, which is um, a great antioxidant. So remember, anything purple is a really good antioxidant. It's really healthy for you. Tigerella, which is a striped cherry tomato, large red cherry, yellow pear. This is the Michael Pollen, which is again, another Brad Gates tomato from Wild Boar Farms. Um, we're gonna grow this one as well. This one we love, um, not only for like putting it in with the spaghetti sauce when we make it, but also it is fantastic as a dried fruit um, and eating it that way, you know, putting it on a pizzas or in omelets or just eating it as a dry snack. They are absolutely del delicious. Brad's Atomic Grape. This one's created by Wild Boar Farms and I bought it from um, Baker Creek, which is rareseeds.com. This tomato is a staple in our garden. This has the most amazing flavor and it's the most beautiful tomato you'll ever grow. You definitely need to check this out and try it because they're absolutely delicious. Now, when you grow the plant, it's kind of a thin spindly plant, but it really produces very well. So don't be afraid if you see your plant looks kind of thin. That's just how it grows. 
Mario wanted to try a white cherry tomato this year, so we're going to do a white cherry. Golden nugget. Super excited about this one, which is called Berry's Crazy Cherry. It is a multiflora type of cherry tomato, which means it's going to grow in bunches, almost kind of like grapes. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. If it produces really, really well, we'll sell bunches of it at the farmer's market and people will be able to buy them by the bunch. Isis Candy, this is another new one um, that we're trying this year. It's supposed to be a really, really flavorful tomato as well. Um, sweet without the acidity. And then Porter Tomato. It's the only saladette style of tomato that I'm growing. Um, it's bigger than a cherry, but it's not big enough to really be your slicer. It's more of like something that you would find sliced in a salad at like a restaurant. So we'll grow some of these. I like these because when I make my spaghetti sauce, I use cherry tomatoes to make my spaghetti sauce. And they're perfect for that. They don't have a lot of juice in them. They have more meat than like if you would actually cut up a slicer tomato and put that in to make your sauce. Um, and I think I have a video on that as well. Again, that'll be in the recipes list uh, for you to check out. And I'll put a link for all the, the zucchini bread and the um, the spaghetti sauce down below so that you can see those videos as well. Um, but they are delicious. We also, with our cherry tomatoes, we dry them and put them in the freezer um, and keep them all winter. And then we add them to pizzas when we make pizzas. And then we also um, put them in omelets. So we definitely make sure that we use our harvest to our fullest extent. How we're going to rotate out spring produce while bringing in summer produce. Now also in the garden plan, something that you don't really see in there um, is going to be um, some random little herbs, some flowers. I usually just pop those in into any little open space that I possibly can so that that way the pollinators have something to feed off of while they're in the garden. Obviously, most of the plants that'll be out there, most of the vegetables will have flowers, but several of them have like a white flower or a yellow flower, which aren't quite as attractive as brightly colored flowers like pinks, reds, purples. So we're gonna be popping in some uh, flowers that are gonna have those brighter colors, again, to attract in the pollinators to come and work their magic. So as you can see, I've got quite a hefty garden plan. Um, hopefully we're able to pull it all off. Uh, if you have any questions or have anything that you think that I should try growing, please put a comment below. Um, we will be going into more in-depth discussion as far as crop rotation as the year goes, as the summer goes, so that you can actually see the process of putting in one plant and then rotating out another plant and seeing how it can continue to grow and make maximum production for your garden. Thank you all so much for watching today. Please give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to see further videos from us in the future, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell button so that you're notified when a new video comes out from Apex Eckers. Again, y'all have a great day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.